Professor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. I, I thank Councillor Osborne for his question. Um, Madam Mayor, there's a fairly lengthy table which I take as read. But the two points I sort of make is that, of course, in, in meeting the challenge set to this council by the last government, uh, we have tried as far as possible and wherever possible to protect the front line. And we have in many ways succeeded and in some ways failed. And where we have failed, the blame entirely lies with the last administration. Well, um, do I honestly take the leader to be saying then, uh, and I may have misunderstood his reply, that um, in the midst of all these cuts that he makes, whatever the reason might be, nowhere does he have any idea of how the impact of them pans out across the borough. He has no system in place to measure it. He has uh, no overall assessment, no concern, and no leadership for this borough. Well, that's um, an interesting way in which Councillor Osborne has read the answer given, because if I were to draw his attention to paragraph three, which he might have missed, it does say that actually all the reductions were subject of equal, equality impact assessment and in fact each of the major cuts that you will have seen has had a lengthy evaluation of what the impact is on, on the wide range of people who r receive the services and who may ha uh, have a diminution in those services. So clearly the council has taken all those issues into account and in fact each paper has been quite vigorously debated both in the OSC and in, in this council. So there is substantial input from both this side and actually, to be fair, from that side, and there is, a, 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 I hope, a united front in, in, in meeting the challenge set by his party. Councillor Nadler. Yep. My, daddy. My daddy, sorry. Thank you, thank you, Worship. Um, uh, would the leader agree with me or, or care to comment on my view that in... Um, in view of all the publicity we've had on poor le leadership um, in this sector, historically and inherited, that this just shows more innovation that uh, Wandsworth is giving in this area and more choice for parents who are in fact the parents of the future, the future that may well be in this, in this chamber one day. I, I'm grateful to Councillor Nadelli. I, I don't subscribe to the new statesman, uh, but I think that many of the colleagues will have read the article about the lack of leadership shown uh, at the top of the party opposite and in fact they are convulsed by the lack of leadership at their end and that is a remarkable contrast from the way the leadership of the coalition government and in this council. Question number two, Councillor Osborne. Question number two to the leader, please. Thank Councillor Osborne for his second question. And on this occasion I appreciate his uh, welcoming this council's initiative to be open. Um, many other people have commented on how the council has taken this initiative and shared the information, warts and all, with our residents because we believe it is our residents who ultimately are our masters and they need to be told and they need to have all the information in front of them. Now in case, in the, in the specific issues he raises, the 27 items are the ones that we consider are, 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 are the major items which have been through the Irving Scrutiny Committee, progress reports on a regular basis. But the website and the publicity does ask people for any other indicators that they would like us to look at and in fact uh, uh, expose more, more, more minutely to, to scrutiny. And of course those who are savvier will be able to, at a click of a mouse, be able to look at all the 97 indicators. Elementary, Madam Mayor. Um, well, actually, we are other people, and we do have some other measures that we would like you to include in this new spirit of openness, which we welcome. Uh, and if, as the leader says, it's going to be warts and all, then there are some things which specifically we would like to be measured. If we're going to have warts and all, then can he also add in the running saw of council house waiting lists in this borough? Can he add in all the other deleterious effects of the council policies that, that his administration has been responsible for that nag away at the body politic in this borough? 
Well, I, I must say I haven't had the time to look at the Council's website and the feedback, but I trust when I do have the time, I'll be looking, able to look at Councillor Osborne's uh, comments on those web pages. Question three. Um, question number three to the Leader of the Council, please. I thank Councillor Maxwell Scott for his um, question, which uh, neatly follows on from what Councillor Osborne started with. And of course, the key message is that we on this side believe that we want to trust the people, as Randolph Churchill said. And of course, we also believe that all the money we spend is actually not our money, it is people's money, whether it is raised locally or whether it comes from a government grant to this council. We have a responsibility for that money. We have a responsibility to explain to people as plainly, as openly, and as accommodatingly as possible how we've done, what we've done, and be able to listen to them when they feel that they need to criticize us. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, thank, I'd like to thank the leader for his answer and uh, really commend him on the leadership he's shown on this. I think uh, we can never really have too much transparency, and as he says, the more people know, the more they understand, the more they'll appreciate the decisions that we're making. What I'd like to ask the leader is really what he sees uh, coming next from this project. I don't think this should be just an end in itself. Would he consider, for example, uh, the idea by Ben Gummer, the MP for Ipswich, uh, about giving uh, people a, um, a breakdown by their income tax of where their money goes? Could, there be something, could that be something that could be done in the borough with council tax bills? Um, and also, I mean, would he agree with me that um, when the more people understand how much things cost, the more reasonable they become about the demands they make? And does he not think that's a good thing and something indeed that the opposition should consider? I, I think um, Councillor Maxwell Scott puts his finger on the pulse. In fact, when the council's publicity came out, by and large, most commentators welcomed the initiative. It may not be what they wanted, but it, they, it is more than what other councils have done. And to be honest, the, on the council tax stuff, I am looking at ways in which we can use the current uh, uh, system to be more open and more uh, revealing in how the council uh, spends people's money. What is interesting is that last, yesterday's uh, Northcote Road report back, uh, or let's talk, there were far, four residents um, who were interested in uh, doing something positive with Northcote Library, and none of them actually started off from the idea about that council should do everything that they wanted. What they had come to talk about and, and, and share with other people was what they were going to do in order to make that library work better for their community. It's that kind of spirit of openness that is bringing forth imaginative public engagement and imaginative solutions which are going to be coming from the public, will be owned by the public, and will be delivered by the public. Question four. A question four of the leader, Madam Mayor. Uh, I thank Councillor Belton for his, uh, uh, his question. Uh, it's interesting that he, he's to, talked about my seeking publicity, but uh, uh, he wasn't particularly backward in coming forward uh, <laughs> or, 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 over the period of August. And, and my comparison with uh, Inspector Cluso and Peter Sellers um, reminds me that perhaps the more apt might have been the character who says, um, whatever, I don't believe it, because I think... Uh, Council Belton seemed to have spent a lot of time in August going around, I don't believe it. But turning to the issue, I mean, the, the core position that, the, that I put out forward and the councils put forward is that the decision that was made was a decision based in policy that this council has had for many, many years. It was a decision that was made by the appropriate officer in the way in which this council operates. It was a decision that was part of a process which has been the same elsewhere, although these were rather different circumstances. And in fact, when we spent whole of August and beyond with Council Belton arguing regularly that this should be seen on a case-by-case -case basis, there should not be a, a blanket judgment and so on. And now that we have made, or the Director of Housing has made, a case-by-case -case review of the case and come to a decision that he feels uh, shoots his fox, he's now upset. I'm surprised, but perhaps not too surprised. Oh. Supplementary, Madam Mayor, before these foxes get going. Um, I should be offended, really. Quite clearly, the leader has deliberately misinterpreted what I 
at least intended to write, and if he read the right-wing blog that I know he's seen, he'll know that the radical new policy comment comes from the blogger and not me. Um, and I suspect even the blogger thought it ironically, but then the blogger should know better than to use irony with Tory party members. They just don't have the wit to take it in. So, but on the general terms, me thinks I, that the leader does protest too much. Talking about me getting publicity, which, by the way, I didn't seek, uh, there was a... <laughs> okay, choose to believe it or not. What is clearly on the record is a letter to the Times from the leader and press release on August 16th, almost before the riots had stopped burning. All I'm asking, really, is that seeing that you are using this to hawk publicity for yourself and this council, why haven't we had the equal amount of publicity to saying that you've withdrawn on your first particular uh, occasion? Uh, if Councillor Belton, uh, thank you for his supplementary, but if he has any influence with the Times um, who invited me to write that article, uh, and if they were to renew their invitation to, to do another one, then I'd be happy to do so. Um, so that's not uh, anything that I, I've been shy of. The council has given this, um, uh, this uh, decision the same publicity as it did before. The fact that I have not been asked to go and appear on, on television or elsewhere is not my fault. I have been available, but I haven't been asked. But the truth of the matter is this, that the decision the council made and the publicity we gave left no council tenant in any doubt that this council has a policy, it intends to implement that policy, it implemented the policy, and no tenant is left in any doubt that this council means business in upholding a tenancy condition that they themselves sh shaped. And it's no point in actually coming up a with a policy and then suddenly say, when the times are tough, we won't implement it. Yes. Supplemental. Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I was wondering if the leader would agree with me that the real innocent victims are the businesses whose premises were trashed and looted on that night, the residents whose homes were fired, and the residents of the area who were terrified by the events on the night of August the 8th. I, 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 I thank Councillor Dawson uh, for his supplementary, and Councillor Dawson puts his finger on the pulse there. What we saw in August and in some of the comments that followed was there was a, a lot of comment about those who caused the disturbance and caused the looting and mayhem. Little was spared for those who were petrified on the night. Little was spared for those who felt that their own neighborhood had been trashed and lost confidence in the systems of, of, of administration and policing. Those are the people to whom, and they are by far the biggest number of people, they are the people to whom we must turn and to, to the other people to whom we must show support and, 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 and put an arm around them. Councillor Moritz. I thank Councillor Moritz for his question. I mean, it's quite an interesting situation, isn't it? We have, we have Mayor Johnson having announced a 1% cut in his precept, which uh, might seem like nothing, but of course it comes on top of four years. Of a, of a precept freeze. In fact, his predecessor came saying he won't particularly be increasing the council tax take and of course left having more than double the council tax or, or, or his precept take. And of course, Mr. Livingston's economics are quite bizarre because yesterday I read in the Evening Standard that he was going to increase police numbers by charging uh, the, the transport police extra money for being on the TFL network. And then I suddenly realized that, of course, if the transport police pay more towards, well, get a bigger bill from TFL, then presumably the transport police would pay it or reduce their numbers. But that seems like strange economics to me. And if the, tra if the TFL doesn't get paid, then presumably if they want more transport police, they presumably how to increase fares, or, but then Mr. Livingston said he's not going to, in fact he's going to cut it. So perhaps he will increase council tax again. On that he has form, and I absolutely believe that that's exactly what, what he will do. He will squeeze the taxpayers who don't have a say in the matter. Whatever his promises are, we didn't believe him last time, we won't believe him again, and he won't be actually the mayor to deliver anything he says.
Uh, supplementary right. one, no. um, I'd thank the leader uh, for his response. I do share his confidence uh, in the outcome, but I suspect it might be a closer and thing come 3rd of May. As I logged on to the Back Boris uh, website today, I couldn't help but notice how often the Mayor spoke about his war on waste. Does the leader have any thoughts as to what the Mayor could do now to take that forward on behalf of local Wandsworth residents over the next four years? Uh, Boris Johnson's war on waste, of course, has produced enormous dividends. I mean, the London Development Agency is a classic example where a uh, former leader of this council led uh, or was part of, the, or, 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 or a task force looking into what went wrong and then finding savings in there. Substantial savings were made in those big areas. There are enormous other pots of money that the, that the mayor has under his control and each one of them could do with a with a renewed scrutiny. But interestingly enough, some of the things that Boris hasn't done, and thank God for it, is having, surrounding himself with cronies with large kind of fact checks going for things that they promised but they never delivered. Um, he certainly hasn't swan around looking for cheap oil in, in the southern climes of, of, of South America. Those are the, some of the waste uh, savings that he's already delivered, and I know that in the next four years he'll continue to deliver more. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I wonder if the uh, leader could tell us a little more about his information to do with Boris and the amount of money, for example, that uh, Transport for London has in its coffers now. Um, I understand that to be over £300 million. Is he aware that that is the case? And does he not think it might be a good idea to use that to keep down transport fares? The 1%, as far as my calculations um, show, would save us all £3.10. How far does he think that would go towards the increase in fares that has just been announced? I would say that wouldn't even cover you for one week, let alone one day. And I wonder if he could share his thoughts for us as councillors and local residents as what we could spend it on. Can I get my commiserations in now so that Councillor Leonie Cooper, when she returns from the fray of election, defeated, uh, and I, in celebration, forget to be polite. Um, so. I'm sorry that you won't be you at City Hall uh, to pursue these questions. As for £3.10, it is the principle, isn't it? Everyone actually, if you find £3 lying on the street, you will not walk on by, will you? I mean, you have to look at money in the way people look at money. People actually see every penny as important. Whether you spend that on whatever you choose to, it's for, for you to. I would probably buy three uh, newspapers on three different days, perhaps, but your, your choice may be different. This is the principle that is people's money, and the longer you hang on to people's money is the wrong thing to do. If Boris doesn't need it, he's giving it back to people. It's for them to choose how they spend it. As for London, the transport of London's uh, re reserves, I have no idea exactly what they are and where they are. But what I do know is the mayor has an ambitious program of capital investment in upgrading the tube system and actually bailing out the failed private pro pro uh, PPP program, which, of course, the last government negotiated and foisted upon London, to be fair, against Kit Livingston's wishes, but it was the last government that foisted in London, has gone pear-shaped, has cost an awful lot of money, and if, if, if Boris Johnson is hanging on to some money in order to continue that investment in the, in the transport infrastructure in, in, in London, then that is a good, good thing. Councillor, Mr. Mayor, sorry to interrupt, but um, I didn't declare an interest because I didn't realise the GLA elections were going to come up. But as my husband is the candidate that is going to uh, beat Councillor Cooper, I thought I ought to declare an interest. Noted. Councillor Thomas? Question six to the leader. Uh, I, I thank Councillor Thomas for his uh, question. The link between uh, low-cost housing and low-income working households become considerably weaker. But what is absolutely right is that as a local authority providing housing, we should use our housing resources to support and aspire people who want to become gainfully employed to take the responsibility of looking after themselves and their families. It is right that we should look at the housing allocation to support them because otherwise they are the ones who get squeezed out of any opportunities for housing. The director of housing will be in the next cycle be being forward proposals which will address this issue. 
however little we may do, it is a lot more than there has been possible before. And it sends again a clear message that this council believes in supporting those who take the responsibility of seeking a job, earning a living, and taking the responsibility of looking after their family. Supplementary. Since he seems happy enough discussing his intentions uh, with uh, the press here, uh, would he uh, give council members uh, the benefit of uh, actually ask, answering the question put to him uh, in this question? Is it his intention to apply uh, the housing into work model to all new tenants if he decides that the pilot is successful? Or, or is indeed this a, just a case of his uh, cabinet member getting it wrong again? Well, Councillor Thomas, uh, uh, I think uh, the question, the answer to the question is printed and I thought that I would not actually bother to read that out and just exemplify some of the points in it. Councillor Ellis. <clears throat> is the leader aware that um, in the uh, housing committee meeting in November uh, this very question was asked and an assurance was given that of course it did not relate to old age pensioners or disabled applicants. Uh, is he also aware that he received that the, uh, the Councillor Thomas also received a similar assurance from the Director of Housing in writing uh, three days later and that the Leader of the Opposition accepted that assurance. Can the Leader tell us how many times does no mean no? The time for questions to the Leader is now over.